Uh, good morning. Let's stand together. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Let's sing together at Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me he died. Calvary, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurn, till my guilty soul imploring turned. Calvary, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty. everything now I gladly own him as my king now my rapture soul can only sing Calvary mercy there was great and grace was free and there was multiplied to me Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Think about that great love that sent Jesus to Calvary. On the last. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span. Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Apply to me, there my burdened soul found liberty. Amen. Unless you go in front okay. this time, how's that? I've been gone so long, we have to get used to what we're doing here again, okay? I have to get back in the swing. Uh, I wasn't singing because I still have a cough. I hope I'm not contagious. I just hope I'm not contagious. But you can stay your distance if you feel necessary. I do not have COVID. My wife and I were both tested. And uh, so for the last couple of weeks, we've been in uh, canceling meetings on two Sundays, uh, coughing, coughing, coughing. Uh, the Kleenex company has been making a lot of money on us <laughs> and uh, that kind of thing. But uh, thankful it hasn't been uh, too severe. Uh, they did say, I, I let a guy to the Lord years ago. He was... Uh, a Persian, he said. He didn't want to be called Iranian, but he's in the hospital, and he called me. He said, Pastor, I have Pannonia. And uh, I said, what? I, I Pannonia. And I, and I, oh, you mean you have pneumonia? Oh, oh yes, yes, I have pneumonia. And so he's a brand-new convert. It's nothing to do with anything here. But <laughs> he, he was, uh, he was a, a brand-new convert, and he had only read the book of Matthew. And I got there to the hospital, and everybody knew him. He's witnessing to everybody. And, uh, I mean, I, I went to two different rooms to witness to people that he had witnessed to. And uh, his name was Bijan, Bijan Marathi. Sounds like he, you know, made a foreign car or something, the Marathi. But uh, he said to me, Pasta, he said, I only know Matthew. Just think what we could do if I knew more. You know, and uh, I said, man, this, uh, this guy's going to be good. And he was. And uh, we I could tell many more stories about how God used him in those, in those early days of his, of his conversion. Burdens, okay? We just sang about conversion. Uh, let's pray about it. Father, thank you so much for your grace today. Lord, how you transform lives and how you reach people from all walks of life and all corners of the world. And we look forward to that great heavenly chorus one day when every kindred tongue, people, and nation will be giving you praise. Amen. Thank you, Father. 
that we can have a part in that. Lord, we seem so far away, so remote, so detached from many of the things that are happening in the world, and yet, Lord, the potential for reaching the world, the potential for doing uh, some things for you that we would never imagine, exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think, the potential's right here. Help us, Lord, to be usable in your sight and use us, I pray for your glory. I pray, Father, for the speaker today. Pray for Pastor Bauman. Use him, I pray, to speak to us. Use your word. May we leave here better than when we came. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And our speaker today is Pastor Joe Bauman from Avoca Bible Church. Uh, he has had three children here, two currently, and uh, we're certainly glad uh, for that. But uh, uh, we've known him a while, and but he's a kind of an enthusiastic guy, you're going to find out, and he's spoken here before, and uh, students found that out, and we appreciate him. Uh, he is a graduate of a school that's no longer with us, Clearwater Christian uh, College, and he stayed in that area, in the Palm Harbor area, for 15 years as a youth pastor at Berea Baptist Church. And then in 2006, he was called to Avoca Bible Church on the west side uh, of our state, and he's been doing a great job there. Uh, I will tell you, I've been in the church a couple of times at least, and the spirit is wonderful, the fellowship is great, and uh, uh, preaching not so much, but uh, because I preached, okay, all right. And uh, we're, we're thankful for him being with us today. His wife Tracy is with us as well, and I hope that you'll be uh, warm and greet them. All right. All right, two quick things this morning to follow up from yesterday. I appreciate your prayers for Ben. And I heard from his uh, folks uh, this morning, and they were just very touched and blessed uh, that we would take the time out, time out to do that and that you would do that. And they don't even know about the cards yet, all right? So they're definitely going to cry uh, when they get those. <laughs> But uh, they, they did, his mom did say that she was, I didn't know this, but they were actually concerned that they might lose him over the weekend. His, his condition had gotten so, uh, so deteriorated. So very thankful for that. She said he, he is improving. Uh, not yet completely given the all clear for that transplant yet. So just keep praying uh, that his condition will improve so that they can schedule that transplant and get him a new kidney that he uh, needs. All right. So keep praying for Ben. Thank you for doing that. All right, next announcement. I'm, I'm going to demonstrate something here. We're, we're going to make a little change in the way we run the to-go program for the dining complex. So uh, you have been, you've been enjoying the to-go option, haven't you? Um, we've been averaging 250 to-go boxes per day uh, this year, and that is a lot, which is great. You're using it. But I've also noticed that those boxes are a little flimsy. And uh, given the quantity of food I've seen some of you very creatively pack into those things, I can only imagine that uh, it's straining under the weight with that flimsy styrofoam container. Uh, those are also not super great for the environment. I don't know if you didn't know that, but uh, the, at the quantities that we're cranking out and at the costs and at the, uh, the flimsiness, I asked Pioneer, is there something sturdier and a little you know, more environmentally friendly that we could work on given that this has been a very popular option? I said, I don't want to eliminate it. I mean, this has been good for the students, but uh, can we do something about all the waste and uh, all of the, uh, the difficulty that that and expense that that has created. And they said, we actually have a program that we use at a bunch of other colleges called Green On The Go. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. What is that all about? Well, it's a sturdy green box that you can use. I assure you it is the same capacity, all right? I'm not limiting your lunch, okay? <laughs> Uh, but, but the lid doesn't flex. Some of you I've seen have like the lid just mounded over the top. But this is like 100% less likely to involve spaghetti on the floor of the lower level of the DC. All right, so that's a good thing. Uh, it actually seals. Listen to this. Oh, that was good. I didn't know if that was going to work, but that was really effective. <laughs> All right. Uh, and so it snaps closed and it can be reused. Now, some of you are already thinking, that's gross. I have to use the same one all semester long. No, all you have to do is turn in the, the dirty one and they give you a little green card, a green on the go card. And then the next time you need it to go, you give them the green card, they give you the box, a new clean sanitized box, all right? And you go in and you do your to go thing with that. Now we're gonna introduce this, I'm just, 
I'm, I know people don't like change and you need time to get, to u- get used to things, okay? So I'm telling you this now, it's not going to start until after Thanksgiving, okay? So the Monday after Thanksgiving, the white styrofoam things will be used only for certain uses that we will still continue. So if you're in the health center and you don't have your box, that's okay, we'll get you a white one. Uh, if you're on a ball team and you guys are heading out and you need a couple, that's fine. Uh, they'll still be available in the disposable, but we're trying to save the planet, okay? So just, <laughs> this is what it's gonna, Green New Deal right here, all right? Uh, no, that didn't help the case, did it? Okay. I'm like Maranatha's AOC, all right, today. But, uh, no? I don't, <laughs> all right. He, he's, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sell this, all right? Okay, so green on the go, there's a, there's a one-time $5 deposit for the box and the card, and then you get your money back at the end of the year, all right? So when you turn it in for the final time at graduation, all right, you get your $5 back. So it doesn't cost you anything, but there's a $5 deposit, because if you lose this, then you lose your deposit, all right? So green on the go starts Monday after Thanksgiving. All right, Dr. Brown. All right, I got the hook. Let's stand together. Create in me a clean heart. I came to the Lord, my heart full of sin, empty of purpose, troubled within. My flesh had the victory, heart sought release. Oh, wilt thou cleanse me? Savior, forgive me, I pray. He granted cleansing, sins fell away. My bondage was ended, my heart set free. Lord, never more may I want. Create in me a clean my father renew a right spirit in me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation may Christ be seen in me Beautiful singing. You may be seated. This is the Thunder Society. They're going to sing for us now. We'll all sing hallelujah.
It's fixed now. Let's take our Bibles, go to the book of Colossians chapter 3. Let me just say what a blessing and what a privilege it is for me to be here. I, I, I truly, as a pastor, am so thankful for Maranatha and uh, I'm just extremely thankful. But as a parent, I'm extremely, extremely fa- thankful. My daughter went here. My other daughter, Sophie's here. My son, Matthew, somewhere here. And uh, folks from our church, Kyle and Caitlin, are here and so many others. And I'm just so thankful. Uh, thankful. I'm thankful that, that uh, Caleb uh, Lettering is, is assistant at our church, and uh, and he's a student here. My wife Tracy is able to be here with me today, hearing this music and, and just being with uh, with you all. And Dr. Merritt is a great blessing for me. I'm looking forward to him speaking at our church in in um, in December. And so uh, you all come over if you want to, and uh, hear him speak. The first week of December, he's coming down, and we're just so thankful. And I know I miss some folks, and, and uh, did I say Matthew? I did say Matthew, okay. He's going to love that. Uh, but uh, no, I, what, it's an honor. But you know what? To be able to share the Word of God with you all, to be able to have these chapel services. You know, as a student, we think a lot of different things. Then we start to grow up in the faith even a little bit more, and we start to go, wow. Those times were so precious. To be able to sing these songs and meet these people, be around these professors, to be able to, to share and sing in choirs like this together, to be able to sing and lift our voices to God. What a blessing. And when we go off in what sadly people call the real world, we don't have that all the time, do we? And it just makes me long for heaven, as they just sing about. Colossians 3, verse 2 says this. It says, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. This word set means to let heaven fill your thoughts. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Let me ask you this question. What is filling your thoughts right now? Maybe you just had a test, or maybe you're going to have one, or maybe there's some things going on in your life. What is filling your thoughts right now? The the, the word set really points back to verse 1, if ye then be in risen with Christ. So since we are, we should now be set towards him. The Colossians was written, as I know many of you know, but just in a former review, in the city of Colossae to this, this wonderful church. It was incredibly pagan. It was incredibly immoral. Kind of like, sadly, so much of the world is today. And sadly, they, they had taken their direction from things that are going on. And sadly, Christians do that too. 50, 80 years ago, a fundamentalist preacher would get up and he would pound the pulpit and said, the the word of the Lord says this, but 50, 80 years later, we've gotten wiser and smarter, right? And so now we can have a little swear and we can have a little this and a little that and we can watch movies that are just dishonoring to the Lord and all these things because, because that's what our society's doing. And as long as we just stay a little bit better than our society, we can be a witness. But my Bible says, and your Bible says, set your things, your affections, your mind on things above. Because the goalposts are moving doesn't mean it's moved for the Christian. And sadly today, the church at Colossae was doing that, and Paul, thank the Lord, was being used by God to stand for truth, or the Holy Spirit of God was filling him to, to, to teach them a principle. We need to understand where our minds, where our goals, where our thoughts, what we purpose in our heart as important is. Where are your affections today? You all know the story. I won't have you turn there in the book of Daniel, chapter 1, but Daniel purposed in his heart. At a time in his life over here, Daniel made a decision. He was taught by his parents. He was taught by his God over here. And then down the road, what he purposed over there affected the rest of his life. What a privilege. What a blessing. There's one thing I can say to all of you, dear friends, is is you have an opportunity to, to, to set your affections on things above here at Maranatha, like, like very few places in the, in the world today. To learn, to grow, to study this word. It is time now to purpose. Because if the Lord gives us more time, what we do upstream is going to affect downstream. Sadly, in the Bible, it wasn't always so. Go to Mark chapter 8. Go with me in your Bibles to Mark Chapter 8, sadly, in the book of Mark, there were disciples who were around the Lord Jesus for 
periods of time, and, and uh, they learned, they, were, they had rubbed shoulders with Jesus, and, 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 and all of these kind of things. And let me ask you this. You have an opportunity to be in chapel. You have an opportunity to be with professors, and you have an opportunity to have uh, dorm devotions and, and all of these wonderful things and personal devotions. We have a time to be close. But what happens when we're tested, Mark chapter 8 and verse 33, notice what it says. Mark chapter 8 and verse 33. It says, but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not. This word savorest not is, is the Greek word meaning you're, you're exercising your mind in the wrong place. Because Peter said, No, Lord, this isn't going to happen. You see, when our affections are not set on things above, they're set on Joel. They're set on things of this world. They're set on things that we think are important. I have to achieve that goal. I have to get that degree. Or I have to get this, uh, this, 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 this cost of living thing or whatever it is in your mind. And that's where is, uh, we go after what's important. Peter said, no way, Lord. No way you're going to do that. He said, listen, your mind isn't where it needs to be, Peter. Your mind isn't where it needs to be. Your mind is struggling. And, and sadly today, I think our minds are struggling because the Bible's clear in the book of Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm to have the mind of Christ. And if I'm thinking about heaven, if I, my mind and my affections are towards heaven, I will clearly have the mind of Christ. Sadly, the Bible said, go to Philippians chapter 3, not only let this mind be, but notice what happened in Philippians chapter 3. Folks struggled then. We're struggling today. And I think, sadly, sometimes it, whether it is being seen through fear or whether it's being seen through so many different things, listen, Washington's not going to fix everything. I'm not sure they can fix anything. The fix is Jesus. It always has been. Oh, but, Pastor, you're sticking your head in the sand. You, you just think God's the answer to everything. Yes, I do think God's the answer to everything. I believe all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, that the man of God may be what? Perfect. Thoroughly what? Furnished. I don't believe we need anything outside of this book. And sin, and, and we used to believe that. People say, oh, we're so much, we're, you know, we're, we're up today. We got, we got the new wave and the progressive this, and the churches are really just, really, are, are, they, are, they, are there more people there? More souls getting saved? More missionaries being sent? Sadly, today, we're trying to uh, not set our affections on things above, but our affections are on things of the world. And, and what does Paul said in inspiration in Philippians chapter 3? Drop down for time to verse 19. Philippians 3, 19. Who's in, and I, and I know, for, for, we're starting verse 18. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame. Now notice, who mind what? Earthly things. When we set our affections on things above and not on things on the earth, we don't mind earthly things. But let me ask you a question. What has gotten more people upset in the last two years? Heaven things, heavenly things, or earthly things? What do we even talk about today? I mean, think about it. It's all COVID this, 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 mask this. Uh, Washington this, Madison this. That's all we talk about because our set and our affections, my affections need to be set on him. And she say, oh yeah, you're a preacher. All you do, pastor, is study the Bible and you pray and, and, and you sing Kumbaya in a circle and that's all you do throughout the day. You got to live in the real world. If you lived in the real world, you would understand. And I just shake my head going, huh? There's not... You know, there's a chapter or two written to, you know, uh, pastors and this, but this is written to us, and it's all Scripture is given, and it's profitable, and we're to grow by it, and we want to be thoroughly furnished. And, 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 and dear friends, please let me understand, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a husband, and I'm a parent, I'm a grandparent, I'm a pastor, I'm a friend. My heart breaks for these folks that have their mind on earthly things. I talk almost every day, if not every couple days to people who are broken. They're in fear. Why? Because their mind's this way. Their eyes are this way. Their affections are this way. If we would just get back to thus saith the Lord and set our affections on 
things above. Let me ask you this. How many woke up this morning and said this to the Lord? Lord, what will you have me do? As a student, sadly, and I do not say this, pat myself on the back, but as a student, sadly, I said, Lord, help me with the test. Lord, help me through the day. But how many times was my affection set on him and said, Lord, what will you have me do today? Lord, who will you have me go to? Oh, but Pastor, we can't do that. We're busy people. Paul, under inspiration of God, wrote he was in prisons, he was in jail, and he had to work for a living. Jeremiah wrote that really long book, and he's in prison all basically the whole time. You see, the Bible's clear. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not into thy own understanding. that all thy ways, say it with me, acknowledge, and he will what? Direct. Do we believe that? Or is that just our life verse? Because it's a great verse. But do we believe that and practice that in our walk? Because our affections are set on things above. And so when I see things on the earth, I go, Lord. When I see things on the earth, I go, help me. When I see things on the earth, Lord, keep me focused. When I see things on the earth, I go, Lord, help me with my unbelief. When I see things on the earth, I go, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. With God, nothing is impossible. Those are wonderful verses, and, but they, they talk about a wonderful promise and a wonderful truth. Think on things above. Let's go back to our text in Colossians chapter 3. Because we see a beautiful teaching here in Colossians chapter 3 that God just doesn't say, do this and I'm going to smack you if you don't. God says, do this, Joel, because it's best for you. What a loving thing. You see, as a parent or grandparent, you, you, you know, especially, well, let's use grandparent. You want to give your kids anything they want. I took my daughter to my granddaughter to Boba one time. We spent fourteen dollars on candy. That's not even kidding you. I mean, we had every kind of candy you could have. I sent her home. <laughs> but as a grandparent, you want to give them whatever they want. If they're crying, give them more. I say he's a lousy grandparent. I never said I was a good grandparent. <laughs> okay, but you know what? You want to give them and listen. God is a heavenly father who does all things well. And he loves his children. And he wants his children to get it. He doesn't want his children because he hasn't given us the spirit of fear. Because he's given us the spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and what? A sound mind. So God doesn't want his children to go, oh no, do you know what's happening today? Do you know what's going on in the market today? Do you know what's going on in Washington today? Do you know what's going on in my studies today? Oh no, what am I going to do? God wants to say, set your affections, your mind, think on these things now look in Colossians chapter 3. God loves me enough and loves you enough to say this. Now, now, now notice at the end of verse 2, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Now let's go down to verse 8 and describe some of the things going on earth. But now ye also put off, put off all these things, and what is it? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, out of your mouth, lie not one to another. Wow, a whole bunch of those things are, are, are related to the tongue, aren't they? And so God is telling us to set our affections on things above, and he's using an illustration and an example to help us not get into trouble. Because those of you who know and have studied, most of you probably have, the book of James, chapter 3, and, and I paraphrase it. This is going to get me in trouble with the Greek scholars here. But let me define. Um, the, the, I wrote it out, and I, I wrote it out really, really kind of neatly so that the, the, the people who actually know the language, because I translated it, um, the, the tongue can get you into trouble really quick. It, it, it's, I mean, I, I did a really good deep dig translation on it in James chapter 3, and I go, oh, how, 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 how great a little fire it can live. It, it, wow, have you ever just wanted to take it back? Have you wanted to go, no, I didn't mean that? Say, Pastor, we, we text. Okay, have you ever sent a text out? Have you ever tried to get rid of that text before while you're sending it? Yeah, I have. Go with me to the Bible, James. Go quickly to James. You see, he says, Joel, he says, friends, when you set your mind on things above, let me tell you the benefit of that. Let me tell you the benefit. Notice in James chapter 3, 
I want to read verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. James 3, 1. For if many things we offend all, if any man offend not in the world, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths, and they may be ob uh, obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are turned about with a very small helm, with a servant the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Boy, can we get in trouble quickly. That was my translation. Boy, can we get in trouble quickly. Boy, can we offend a lot of people fast. And God says, Joel, when your mind is set on me, when your mind is set on serving, when your mind is set on obedience, when your mind is set on following me, when you're trusting in the Lord with all your heart and leaning not on your own understandings, and in all thy ways your mind, you're acknowledging him, I'll direct your paths. But you know what? It's not only the path he directs. Because he said, when you get in front of people, I'm going to show you even the words to say. Holy Spirit of God, if you're a born-again Christian, is inside of you. And the Holy Spirit of God's ministry is to remind us of the words of Jesus. Oh, dear friends, think about our tongue today. Think about the victories and think about, sadly, the defeats. We are responsible for the words we say. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account of. Every idle word. Proverbs says death and life are in the power of the tongue. What a blessing to be able to look at that special person and say, I love you. What a blessing. One of, if not the greatest thing ever happened to me in, other than the Lord Jesus Christ and salvation is being able to tell her, I love you, will you marry me? I'm not saying that because she's here. I'm saying it because it's the truth. What a privilege we have with the tongue to say, I love you. I, I, I care about you. Eh, what a privilege. What a privilege we have to say, it's a boy or it's a girl or, or this is my dear friend or, or whatever it is. That what a privilege it is. For, uh, whosoever shall... Confess me before men, him and I confess before my heavenly Father. What a privilege to say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a privilege it is to have, have these young ladies be able to sing and tell us about Jesus and tell us about a future home in heaven. Awesome. But when that tongue is not controlled by thus saith the Lord, how quickly things can change. The question really is, go with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 26. The question really is, what is coming out of our mouth today shows us where our affections are set. What comes out of our mouth today will show us where our affections are set. You see, in Matthew chapter 26, and I wish I had another hour and a half because to preach this, but, uh, but, but Peter's saying, um, okay, God, you've got to do things the way I think you need to do them. And in Matthew chapter 26, go to verse 35. Matthew chapter 26, go to verse 35. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise said all the disciples, I'm not going to deny you. I'm not going to. Jesus said, yes, no, no, I'm not going to do that. God tells us to do something. We say no. We say we're not going to do it. And uh, we're setting ourselves up to what? Fail. And not only did he, did he do it, but go to drop in the same chapter, verse 74. Then began he to curse and to swear. Other people say, Pastor, what you're talking about, I'd never do it. I believe with all my heart. Matter of fact, Peter's one of my favorite Bible characters. I respect him greatly. I rarely ever point the finger at him. Because sadly, Peter's probably more like me than other Bible characters. Sometimes we rush in before we think about it, right? But he rushed in. <laughs> Think about his life and testimony. Think about his, but, but, but here's the sad part. He, he cursed God. That tongue that can tell a, a spouse they love him, that tongue that can tell a friend they care about him, that, that, that spouse that can say, it's a boy, it's a girl, that, that tongue, you know, that can, you know, what a blessing. When Shelby, my oldest, who, who, who came here many years ago, when, when she had her baby and, and they walked out, you know, everybody's crying, and, and, and they, they tell you that the baby's fine and that my daughter's fine. I mean, it's just amazing. What we can do with our lips and what we can, it's just awesome. And I'm walking through life 
recognizing all the blessings, and I'm thinking, why would I use it? Pastor, Peter never intended to. I don't believe he did intend to. But when we get our eyes off the will of the Lord, when we get our eyes off the plan of God, because the plan of God was for this, he was going to die, he was going to be buried, he was going to rise again. Peter said, no way. And sometimes that happens with us. God, I, 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 I trust the Lord with all your heart, and not all understand all the ways and knowledge him, he'll direct us. Not that path, Lord. I'll go anywhere but. And what happens? Then our tongue starts being used to say no to God. Then our tongue starts to be used to disrespect and to do these kinds of things. You see, the question today is, if our affections are set on things above, I will know by what comes out of my mouth. Have we ever decided what is coming out of our mouth? And I know today we pretty much don't use our mouth, pretty, and I'm not knocking it at all. We use our fingers. But what comes out of our fingers today? What do we say on our phones? What do we say in our things? What are we saying? What is our communication? Have we even had a conversation with somebody in the last six months that didn't have to do with COVID? It didn't have to do with the government? It didn't have to do with our lack of freedom? I'm not knocking any of those things. I'm just saying, where are our affections set? When do we talk about Jesus? Go with me to your Bibles to Ephesians. You know what it says. The question today is what is coming out of our mouth? What is our communication? What is proceeding forth from the Christian today will really show me where my affections are set, what I am thinking about. What am I thinking about? When I am, what am I thinking about? I'm going to talk about it. Pretty soon there's going to be deer season and the whole state's going to go crazy. And that's what they're going to talk about. And, and one of the men in our church used to say, we could talk about it from deer season to January 1, then we're done. And we do that, okay? We talk about it. They show pictures. They do all these kind of things. Because what you're thinking about and what you're doing, you talk about. So where are my affections set will be seen in what I'm saying. And the tongue gets us in so much trouble. What's the solution? Set my affections on things above. Say, not on things of the earth. Look at what it says in Ephesians chapter 4. Drop down to verse 29. Let, what's the next word? No corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let what? No, none, zero, zip, zilch. I'm not being funny. It's a burden in my heart. I'm not even, but do you think this includes texting or blogging or something on a web page? You think the Holy Spirit would have known that that's what we're going to be doing thousands of years later? Or do you think he, he doesn't want Joel to have an attitude when he's blogging? I have people say to me, Pastor, you don't understand what you're preaching about. I have freedom. I'm an American. I'm bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, which is the Lord's. And what I'm sharing with you isn't pointing a finger at anybody. It's this burden on my heart over the last many years. Because I want Christians, and I'm talking to myself, to get back to doing what we're called to do. Because I believe the only answer has always been the only answer. I believe the only answer is the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. I believe that if you have a concern for this or a concern by that, it, it is the power of God under salvation to them that believe. I believe today God can change lives. I believe he can move in kings' lives. But my mind needs to be set on things above. And I need to trust him. And I need to plead him. Now, now real quickly for time, go with me to, to, to John chapter 21. Because here's the great part. And no matter where you are today, let me just say this. What a blessing that we can, we can go to John chapter 21. Because Peter was cursing God. He was really struggling. He was, he, was, he was in a rough place spiritually. And here's the great part. John chapter 21. So, verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said to him, Yea, Lord, 
Thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, love thou me. Peter was grieved because he said unto him, Third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things and knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Now, we're, we're let those professors and, 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 and understanders of this passage way more than me I'll help to clarify that to y'all later. But here's what I say here was a man who was broken. And here was Jesus. And Jesus came to this man that was broken and said, I love you, get back to work. Here was a man who had cursed God. Here was a man who had denied to virtually everyone that he was even a believer, follower, not even a follower. And God found him. God said, get back to work. Sometimes my affections aren't where they're supposed to be. And sometimes I struggle. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. And since we are risen with Christ, I need to set my affections on things above. And God said it will change your life. It'll change those things, those earthly things. Because now when I see the troubles and trials of life, I'll cry out. When Peter is walking on water and he looks around and sees all the waves and he's sinking, who does he, what does he ask for, a boat? No, he asks for Jesus. People say to me, Pastor, it's not logical. No, it's not logical to walk through the Red Sea. It's not logical to walk around a wall and it to fall down. It's not logical to put a whole bunch of animals in an ark. It's not like, but, but, but who cares? It's God. And our God is bigger. It's time to say, listen, it doesn't matter what's going on here. This view, I mean, I care about it as a Christian. I care about it to, be, to affect them for Christ. But that's not dictating thus saith the Lord. It's not dictating my peace. I have peace that passes understanding. I don't have peace as the world gives. Thank God. Thank the Lord. So dear Christian friend, where our affection set is clearly seen in so many things. I just picked one of them and what we're saying, where we're going, what we're doing, what we're listening to, so many others. But God says, if we confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I thank God for the knock. I thank God for the wake up call in Peter's life. I thank God for the wake up call in my life. And Christian friend, if God is speaking to you through the Holy Spirit of God, through the Word of God, let me just challenge you to ask God to be honest, to have Him search your heart. Say, Lord, where are my affections? What am I thinking about right now? What was I thinking about when I came in? What was I thinking about when they were singing? And in that one area and so many other areas that we could have looked at, Lord, forgive me. One of the blessings and, and one of the things that encourages me is we love these stories and these Bible stories and we love how God did this and we love to see the power and the presence and the promises of God. Well, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Uh, which verse do you want? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I mean, think about the verses and the promises we have today. But our mind is this way. Maybe ask God to go back to some of those verses that we so easily quote. And say, no, Lord, not do I just know that they're there, but am I practicing them in my walk? Set, clear path. Many of you probably know your major by now. And what happened is maybe you came for a little bit and, and, and you decided and now it's set. The course of action is set. And now that the course of action is set, you're starting to get into some of these classes that you're taking. And, and then each year you're more and more and more into that. And that's the way it is with the Lord. When, when it's set, he teaches us of himself. And he opens up understanding to the word of God by the Holy Spirit of God. And it just gets better and better. And, and it doesn't mean it's not tough. But when thou walkest through the fire, I will be with thee. The flames and all that child will flow thee. Do you believe God is able? Do you believe God is able? Do you believe he's willing? There's anything I wouldn't do for church folks, for 
my kids, my family, for you all, there's nothing I wouldn't do. But God's perfect. There's nothing he hasn't already done and granted unto us through the word of God by his spirit. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, set. Is my course clearly focused on thee? Have I purposed in my heart that I would not? The goalposts moving, I pray they are not. But I am thankful for the truth. The truth will set us free. But I'm thankful today that, 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 that despite where this sinner was or is, that you have given us the victory. You've given us your promises. You've given us truth. I pray for my friends here today. I pray, Lord, that you would just encourage them. It is tough times from a world's perspective. It has been tough times from the world's perspective, but that's not our vision. Yes, we have to live here, and we're thankful. We have to live here, we're thankful that we have the opportunity to be an influencer, opportunity to let our light so shine before men. But Lord, I want them to see you, not me struggling on earth. I want them to see peace. I want them to see your power. I want them to see your presence in my life, in our life. That comes when Colossae didn't say, no, they're pagan, they're immoral, that's the way we're going to go. But no, we're going to go towards Christ and follow him. I pray that this living example that you've granted unto us and my friends here this morning would be where our affections are set on Jesus. And when the trials and struggles and troubles will come, there's no question they're here or they're coming or they'll be even worse, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do. We have a great God who alone is worthy to be praised. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.